The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online, uh, from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute. We're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Uh, the promises of uh, fruits and vegetables, <clears throat> all of it being good for us, couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, the devil's in the details, and recent study shows that uh, Weight gain, significant weight gain, in fact, in children and adults are linked to 100% fruit juice. Yes, and uh, uh, I already know that this may come uh, as a big surprise to uh, many of our listeners out there. So this is according to a new study or analysis of prior studies. Mm. And uh, what it shows is that drinking a glass or more of 100% fruit juice every day was linked to a small increase in weight in both children and adults. Okay, so anyone who is kind of a health nut probably understands better why too much reliance on juice is a bad thing. What is the fundamental problem with juice? Well, one fundamental problem with drinking fruit juice is the quantity that we consume. Um, Eating fruit uh, this way makes it so much more easier to overdose. Mm. Um, For example, uh, let me ask you a question. How often do we eat three oranges in one sitting, right? No, never. It's too much work. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's one thing for sure. Uh, But a glass of orange juice is around three oranges, and we can just down that in under two minutes easily, right? Mm. And we always go back for more. Mm. And uh, that will add uh, many calories from sugar and lead to a spike in uh, blood glucose. Don't you, don't you kind of hate it when your parents are right about things that you would rather be right about? Because <laughs> my whole thing with my parents was, I want fresh fruit juice. And they said, fruit has to be consumed. Not like that, in moderation. but in moderation. Maybe nicely cut up, but definitely not juiced. Yeah. And then I grew up in a, in a generation in California where we had juicing parties. Do you know what those yeah. are? It's pretty ridiculous. Like over the weekend, everyone gathers, brings like uh-huh. celery sticks and fruits and we... Yeah. Eat juice for hours. <laughs> it turns out there's nothing healthy about it. As you alluded to, Erica, it's the it's a mm-hmm. spike in, in sugar levels. The sugar sure. in the blood can lead to insulin resistance, some metabolic syndromes, diabetes, heart disease, obesity, and a host of other chronic conditions. Mm-hmm. Did this meta study uh, conclude that that's the causal relationship with the fruity drinks and insulin levels? You know, this study um, did not show a direct causation, Mm. only an association. However, the findings were actually quite valid. And uh, the studies matched what the experts saw clinically. Mm. So in addition to some of the problems you just mentioned, uh, drinking too much fruit juice can also contribute to child obesity and dental cavities as well. So a host of problems. It's funny. Uh, I was going to ask this question, too. Uh, our mm-hmm. listener, Aaron, asked, are we talking about real fruit juice uh, or yeah. are we talking about processed garbage? So I, no, no, no. We're talking about real juice. OK, 100 percent fruit juice. 100%. Should right. we be drinking it at all or in moderation? Is it OK? In moderation, it's OK. So the, the question is, how much juice, 100 <laughs> percent fruit juice, should we be drinking every day? So uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics advises parents and guardians uh, to avoid juice entirely for babies that are younger than a year old. Mm. And uh, they also advise parents to limit juice intake to just 113 grams. It's 113 milliliters Mm. a day uh, for children ages one to three and just 170 grams, roughly six ounces a day for children aged uh, four to six years old. Mm. Now, the general consensus among experts is that there's really no uh, health reason to have juice instead of whole fruits and vegetables unless your child cannot tolerate eating regular food for whatever reason. It's funny because when you grow up, you should form ideally better eating habits. But even us as grown-ups, it's a little bit tough. I mean, fruit juice yeah. tastes great. I think 
I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed, but it's lining up perfectly. So why not share? Look what I have for breakfast, Erica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fruit juice. <laughs> Um, but in my defense, that's my breakfast. And I intend to have one cup, just one cup. And uh, you're, you're taking your vitamins for the day. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. So how about for adults? How much uh, fruit juice should we be consuming yeah. if at all? So teenagers and adults should drink no more than 220 grams. That's eight ounces a day of 100% uh, fruit juice. Uh, and the general guidance is against routine uh, consumption of fruit juice. In other words, uh, relying on juice rather than water for thirst or consuming juice specifically for health benefits. All right. For some, the concern over 100% fruit juice may be a little bit baffling. It feels like, you know, maybe fruit juice is better than, I don't know, a hamburger meal first thing in the morning. Uh, so what's the difference between fruit and its juice? Yeah, so uh, I think this is the, the the key part about mm. this whole conversation. So whole fruits and whole vegetables come in packages of nutrients like carbohydrates, protein, fat, minerals, and vitamins. Uh, they're all contained uh, with fiber, right? And that's how our bodies are originally designed to get nutrition. Mm. Uh, so eating a whole apple, for example, doesn't spike blood sugar levels because fructose, uh, which is the sugar find uh, naturally in fruits and some types of vegetables, is released slowly into the blood. Mm. But drinking apple juice floods the blood with fructose. The effect is that much quicker, you know, the effect of sugar on the body. Mm. So drinking only juice means that we take away uh, the important fiber and the structural parts of the food. And this causes our body to digest and metabolize, uh, you know, foods differently than it was originally evolved to do. So now I'm confused. I, I have a half glasses, half empty strawberry juice. What do I do with this? Do I take the two oh. hours to drink it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good Yeah, just uh, take small sips. I don't know. I, I think you can, you know, you can have... Mm your strawberry juice yeah you know, working the way. you're already di digesting food as you drink because you're speaking the whole time for two hours thank you erica for being on <laughs> my side it's it's a funny thing because i think a lot of us just especially people who are you know rushing to get to work like <laughs> you and i we just needed an easy breakfast mean and yeah. that's not always as simple is it um but no. Yeah, fruits are meant to be eaten in in small dosages. Um, bitten Old into fruits are always better. Always better. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. All right, let's move on to our second uh, buzzword ever. They uh, efforts underway to rescue baby dolphins uh, caught in waste net off of the Jeju Island. Yeah, so uh, this has been on the news. Uh, maritime authorities uh, have started to uh, rescue this uh, one baby dolphin that was found caught in a discarded fishing net, a wasted fishing net in waters off of Jeju Island. Uh, it's an Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphin calf that is less than a year old. And uh, the dolphin was first spotted uh, swimming with this uh, net stuck on its tail uh, in early November of last year. And according to the Jeju National University uh, dolphin research team on Wednesday, more than two months later since it was first spotted, uh, the dolphin was seen again in the same dangerous condition, still with the net attached to its body mm -hmm. uh, in the sea off of Daejeongup in the southern city of Seogipo on Jeju Island. Okay, that's that's been a few months, right? You said early November yeah. was when they first spotted. And mm -hmm. who, who knows how long the dolphin had a, a, a waist net just sort of caught on its tail. How yeah. is the baby dolphin doing? What else were they able to observe? You know, the, the baby dolphin uh, appears to have become a more sluggish compared to uh, November. And uh, experts say that it can be in serious danger if the waste net gets caught on a reef. Uh, the net is around uh, 1.5 to 2 meters long. Uh, the research team has reported this situation to the Jeju 
provincial government and the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries, and has called for specific measures to rescue the dolphin. Now, a Jeju government official says that it is currently cooperating with the maritime ministry to, to find ways to save the baby dolphin. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, they're going over several options because mm -hmm. any artificial rescue attempt mm -hmm. could cause serious injuries to the dolphin. Uh, all right. So then what, what are some of the key concerns they have at this point in time? Yeah, so experts say the thin net uh, appears to be slowly digging into the dolphin's flesh every time it moves to swim. Mm. And uh, they say in the worst case scenario, the net could even cut off the dolphin's mm. tail. Now, they also say the dolphin may become really stuck, like immobile, if the net gathers more seaweed in the water, uh, you know, which will make the net become heavier mm. and get caught more easily on reefs. Okay, so I'm sure they have a game plan in place, right, to help the dolphin out. But first, mm. um, it's it's difficult, especially because the dolphin naturally is continuously moving things along, yep. hoping to shake it off. Um, we'll wait and see and keep tabs on the matter. Let's move on to our final buzzword of the day. The Guinness World Records... Reviewing the world's oldest dog title, why? <laughs> yeah, so the world's oldest dog title was actually quite recently awarded to a dog named Bobby in Portugal. And the reason why the Guinness World Records is conducting a formal review is uh, some veterinarians raised doubt over his age. Mm. Uh, a Guinness spokesperson said that uh, while the review is ongoing, they have decided to temporarily suspend both the record titles for the world's oldest dog living and the world's oldest dog ever mm. until uh, their whatever they're finding is in place. So the spokesman person, the spokesperson has not actually said uh, specifically what had raised their suspicions, but skeptics say that uh, Bobby's feet uh, appear to be in a different color in photos of him as a puppy and snaps of him in his final days. Now, I've read several articles on the story, mm -hmm. and uh, some others have pointed out that Bobby looks to be a little bit too overweight in his final years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even humans, right? Mm -hmm. If they're overweight, mm -hmm. yeah, it would be difficult for them to live so long. So right. there have been several suspicions that have been raised uh, in the last uh, few months. All right. I mean, and suddenly I'm left wondering, I mean, what is the process like to prove that you, in fact, have have the Guinness World Record? Do they have a committee that go into double check? Does it just rely on the good faith of honest uh, uh, record keeping? Uh, I wonder, how, how does the owner of the dog feel? Has the owner of the dog made a statement about the skepticism? Yes, actually, uh, Bobby's owner says the suspicions are completely unfounded. Okay. Uh, he said in a statement after uh, his dog's death that a certain elite within the veterinary world tried to give people the idea that Bobby's life story simply was not true. And according to the owner, some veterinarians were upset because the owner had uh, for a long time attributed Bobby's longevity to factors including a steady diet of human food ah. rather than pet food, which experts often recommend. Okay, so tell us about Bobby. How long did he live according to his owner? So Bobby died in October of uh, three months ago at the official age of 31 years and 165 days. Um, you know, uh, he was a purebred Rafeiro de Alentejo, which is a Portuguese breed of livestock guard dog mm. uh, that has a usual life expectancy of 12 to 14 years. Now, considering that Bobby lived 31 years, mm. he, oh, he lived a really, really long life, even for this breed. Mm. Uh, you know, his achievement broke a close to a 100 year record that was held previously by an Australian cattle dog named Bluey, who died back in 1939, and at the time he was aged 29 years and five months. All right, so we'll keep tabs on the story, right? Yeah. If Bobby did, in fact, live to be a third, 31 and 165 days, that's remarkable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Why take away from that moment? But we'll wait and see. Thank you so much, Erica. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.